All right, we're about ready to uh, start reading chapter seven out of the book, Pigs in the Parlor, titled Seven Steps to Deliverance. There are seven steps to bringing deliverance into one's life. Number one, honesty. One must be honest with himself and with God if he expects to receive God's blessing of deliverance. Lack of honesty keeps areas of one's life in darkness. Demon spirits thrive on such darkness. Honesty helps bring them into the light. Any sin not confessed or repented of gives the demon a legal right to remain. Ask God to help you see yourself as he sees you and to bring to light anything that is not of him. I acknowledge my or Psalms chapter 32 verse 5 says, I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24 says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way of everlasting. Number two is humility. This involves a recognition that one is dependent upon God and his provisions for deliverance. James 4, chapter 4, verse 6 and 7 says, God resists the proud, but he gives grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. It, it also involves a complete openness with God's servants ministering in the deliverance. James chapter 5 verse 16 reads, Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. Number three is repentance. Repentance is a determined turning away from sin and Satan. One must hate all evil in his life and fall out of agreement with it. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Amos chapter 3 verse 3 says, One must loathe his sin. Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 43 says, And there shall ye remember your ways and all your doings, wherein ye have been defiled. And ye shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for all your evils that ye have committed. Deliverance is not to be used merely to gain relief from problems, but in order to become more like Jesus through obedience to all God requires. Repentance is a turning from all that hinders spiritual growth. Ministry and fellowship. Repentance is a turning from all that hinders spiritual growth, ministry, and fellowship. Repentance requires open confession of all sin. It takes away the legal rights of the demon spirits. Number four, renunciation. Renunciation is the forsaking of evil. Renunciation is action resulting from repentance. When he, John the Baptist, saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said to them, O generation of vipers, how hath, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Bring forth fruits, therefore worthy of repentance. Matthew chapter three, verse seven and eight. Bring forth fruits worthy of repentance involves more than words. It is demonstration of repentance, evidence that one has truly turned from his sins. For example, if one repents of lust, he must need to destroy some pornographic materials. If one has repented of religious error, he, he may need to completely renounce it by destroying all literature and items associated with that error. In Acts chapter 19, verse 18 through 19, it reads, And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together 
and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. Renunciation means a clean break with Satan and all his works. Number five is forgiveness. God freely forgives all who confess their sins and ask forgiveness through his son. See 1 John 1 19. He expects us to forgive all others who have ever wronged us in any way. Matthew chapter 6 verse 14 and 15 reads, For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Willingness to forgive is absolutely essential to deliverance. See Matthew chapter 18, verse 21 through 35. No deliverance minister can affect a, can affect a deliverance unless the candidate has met God's conditions. Number six, prayer. Ask God to deliver you and set you free in the name of Jesus. Joel 2.32 says, Whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Oh. Sorry about that. Number seven is warfare. Prayer and warfare are two separate and distinct activities. Prayer is toward God and warfare is toward the enemy. Our warfare against demon powers is not fleshly but spiritual. Ephesians, see Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 12. And 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 through 5. Use the weapons of submission to God. Use the weapons of submission to God, the blood of Jesus Christ the word of God and your testimony as a believer. See James chapter 4 verse 7, Revelations chapter 12 verse 11, and Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17. Identify the spirits, address them directly by name in a commanding voice, and in faith command them to go out, to go in the name of Jesus. Enter the battle with determination and assurance of victory. Christ cannot fail. He is the deliverer. Mark 16, 17 says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. Luke 10, verse 19 says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Psalms 18 verse 2 reads, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. And that is the conclusion of chapter 7. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to share, like, share, and comment on these videos. Uh, we're offering these as a free of charge to you guys, so um, we'd appreciate it if you did that for us. Thank you.